Does it keep you awake at night that the, this is a huge bet, a multi-billion dollar bet yeah. on quantum computing that you are involved in? I believe in what I do, Becky. I'm, I'm very convinced about what we're doing. But yes, uh, the, invest, the stakes are big. The stakes are really big. Leandro, thank you. Uh, it's good to have you here. We're talking about quantum computing, which quite frankly to many people feels like something out of Star Trek. You know, this is not a field that is well understood. How do you explain it? Good question. Quantum computing is a new form of computation, a new paradigm for computing. It's an experimental technology, so this is different from classical mechanics, right? You have classical mechanics where you have balls moving at a certain velocity and being at a certain position, and then you have the microscopic world of atoms and nucleons and nuclei and, and electrons where things can be in quantum entanglement or in a superposition of being on two places at the same time and these type of things. Your brain is so big that you think that's the basic way of explaining quantum computing that was to the, that people. Was the I'm already lost. Right. No, I'm not. Look, mm -hmm. but for many people mm -hmm. still, I guess the question is, what can com uh, quantum computing do that, that a regular computer that we all you know, are used to using can't? Right. So a classical computer essentially works, the basic unit of information is the bit. So this is a, a, a variable that can be in a, in a state zero or in state one. And that we use for storing information, processing information in our devices. Now, a qubit can exist in a superposition, in a quantum superposition of being in two states at the same time. So that's a very abstract construction. So you can think of something that can be in state zero and one at the same time. And this opens the doors to an entire new way of processing information. And that lies at the heart of the difference between quantum computing and regular There you go. And there computing. you go. Quantum computers will not replace classical computers or um, classically boosted uh, AI algorithms. Quantum computer will integrate to it in a complementary way. So for instance, maybe the large language models, the architecture will still be classical, but quantum computers will help on the training of those models. There's a huge race, isn't there, going on between the US and China at mm -hmm. present to be supreme in, in, in technology. And we've seen that in, in the, uh, uh, the AI space. We're also seeing that in the quantum space yeah. as well, correct? Correct, yeah. There's a big, that's a big, big issue. This is not gonna be a single player, uh, a single player game, right? And there are going to be also exportation bans and just wars, like we've as we seen say. with AI just, chips from, just, from the states, just right? like we're seeing with GPUs yeah. in the AI industry, right? So uh, it is extremely important for the UAE to secure this technology in the country, right? This is one of the most um, ambitious initiatives of the UAE and Abu Dhabi government in particular, uh, in terms of uh, uh, innovation in the country. There's a long tradition of adopting technologies from elsewhere, but this is a very, TII in particular, is a very serious effort to create high-tech, deep-tech businesses in the country. And uh, we do have teams, for instance, in the Quantum Research Center, we have uh, a lab for quantum computing hardware, we have a superconducting qubit experiments, we have quantum sensing and quantum communication efforts, as well as a big team in quantum uh, algorithms and software, right? So we have um, uh, partnerships with um, quantum hardware providers like IonQ or, or Quantinium. We're in conversations with QERA from States. the US. Yep. Which industries does quantum have the potential to completely revolutionize? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's probably going to be in the pharmaceutical industry with uh, uh, transformative developments that can happen on drug design. Uh, there's lots of interest from uh, manufacturers of batteries and, and solar panels connected to, to material science. And then I think there's going to be big, big impact on data science and machine learning. Maybe it's going to take a bit longer than the chemical and pharmaceutical applications, but the AI and deep learning and generative modeling sectors, this is going to be impacted by quantum technologies. When will that be? That's the trillion dollar question. <laughs> if you look at the roadmaps of the major quantum hardware uh, companies, they all talk about um, large scale fault tolerant quantum computers. 
uh, in maybe 10 years, mid 30s, people are saying, right? From the 30, early 30s. So mid-30s. between now and then, yeah. for the next decade, you will be faced regularly with that criticism. This could all just be hype. There is hype, this is clear. Mm. Um, enthusiasm is clearly good. Over promising can be counterproductive for the field. Uh, at the same time, this is fostering lots of funds, both from private and public sector, going into research, which is good. But what, what's the influence on my life today? I think on the on the uh, on on the life of of people, it's still uh, early to talk about a concrete impact. So here, for instance, in the UAE, there was recently a new uh, regulation at the, la- at the at the national level for institutions to migrate to quantum safe encryption schemes banks and and governmental companies they have teams now working together with us uh, to really uh, understand how this migration how this migration is going to happen then on the other hand you have big stakeholders here like adnoc enec big companies like that they are already putting resources and effort to really understand how to adapt to this so talk to me about the work that you've been doing with adnoc for example which is the big national oil company here so at, with Adnoc, currently we have two projects signed. For instance, let me tell you about something cool. So there is one project where we're, gonna, where, where we're going to use quantum sensors to map the magnetic field of the Earth on the territory of the UAE to, uh, to an unprecedented precision. And this can have not only, of course, relevance to uh, an industrial uh, 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 operation like Adnoc, but even all also for GPS-less navigation. And so the idea there is that if you have a very precise mapping of the Earth's uh, magnetic field, then you can blindly navigate that with this type of, of, of uh, ideas. If I asked you to give me three sort of trends or ideas that you expect to revolutionize industry and reshape my life yeah. going forward, what would they be? I think clearly we need to mention AI. The level of advances that are taking place nowadays with large language models and, and other architectures are really uh, something that 20 years ago would have been unthinkable. I think quantum technologies is indeed going to be another revolution. There was a revolution in the 50s uh, in quantum with the, inventions of, with the invention of transistors and the laser. Now we're gonna go for the second quantum technology revolution. And if I have to name a third one, I think cognitive neuroscience is making lots of advances, the understanding of the what brain. What do you mean by that? The understanding of the brain and how conscious, sen- sentient, sentient beings arise from some bio chemical, electrical circuitry in the brain. Thank you. This has been absolutely fascinating. Cool. Thank, you. Thank right. you. I hope in. it went well. Right. <laughs> yeah. All right.